outbreak beyond impact of climate change and trade uncertainties, farms in the United States of America are feeling the heat of new immigration policies. Mass deportation of immigrants, mostly from Africa, Latin America and Asia, has resulted in shortage of labor on farms, which leaves owners with little option. Prince Api has just returned from uh, Minnesota, where he engaged some interest groups on the situation, immigration policy, and here is his report. Here in Minnesota is this 1,000-acre land where Kaifa Dairy Farms is located here in the USA. These are the sons of the fifth-generation Kiefa farming family. Kevin Kiefa is one of the children Farm, we milk 350 cows and farm 1,000 acres of land. Getting labor for their farms have become very difficult. Kevin Papp is president of Minnesota Farm Bureau. And the concern we have in agriculture is that our cows and our crops can't wait. When our crops are ready to harvest, we need that help. And farmers need that. Sometimes they only need them for two weeks to harvest their crops to help. Sometimes you need it all year to help milk the cows. So we have a very good, experienced, hard-working agriculture labor pool, but some of them are undocumented. The situation spreads across America as immigrants are being deported en masse. The unemployment rate in Minnesota is currently around 3%, which means that areas like Minneapolis, that is a farming community, relies mostly on immigrants to work on some of their farms. But currently, the immigration policy by the Trump administration is pushing most of these immigrants from Africa, North America, and Asia out of the country, which means their farms are going to be affected. The president has chosen to announce massive deportation raids. The administration has been months. The, the new immigration policy year, requires undocumented immigrants to leave the country. Of, the, in the US, Jose Delgado is labor expert with uh, Altec. There's a, a two kinds of visas um, that are now available for people that come and work for agriculture. But those visas are very limited. They, they are only valid for either four, or six, or seven months. So those, those people can apply and they can come here and they can do the, the labor that is required. But for businesses that are not seasonal, uh, dairy, beef, pork, um, poultry, and swine, where you need labor for an entire year, those visas are not applicable they are not viable. So then these businesses, they have to find labor whatever they, 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 they can. Um, so unfortunately, the people that comes here to this country and work for these kind of businesses, they don't have access to visas or you know, to have a legal status. Apart from the immigration challenge, the construction industry has become more attractive for a few workers available than agriculture. Uh, on a daily farm, for example, maybe a worker will make uh, an average of, you know, 10 hours, uh, excuse me, $10 an hour versus construction. Those guys, they can make between 20 and 10, 25 uh, dollars per hour. So it's a big difference. And agriculture can't compete with those things. The International Federation of Agricultural Journalists, IFAG, on a boot camp farm tour, understand the labor shortage faces many farmers across the USA. President Owen Roberts believes journalists have some critical roles to play in the situation. But they have a problem with attracting labor here. The media can help provide information, but the media, that's one of the roles I see as, as the media, is to provide the knowledge that farmers can use to find new ways to do things. Meanwhile, Minnesota Farm Bureau President Kevin Papp says the office is working to change the situation for the better. System, and we need to fix the system we've got to make sure that if you're here, you've gone through the process, you don't need to be worried about being sent back.
Um, so we're going to continue to be at the table and talk about how can we make agriculture labor better, not only for the farmers, but for all the rural communities. Until these immigration challenges are collectively addressed, farmers will continue to grapple with difficulty in getting people to work on their plantations. Prince Apia, reporting.